Hello, Milwaukee. This is Pastor Walter Owens of New Life International Ministry. This is the day that our Lord and Savior has made, and boy, we're going to really rejoice in it. Along with myself and my partner in Christ, Pastor Charles Zimmer. We welcome all our listeners to our weekly broadcast show, Focus 2020. As believers in Christ, we must have a 2020 vision and a transformative mindset to live and abide and walk in the plan and the will God has for your life. Hello. <laughs> cut. No, we ain't going to cut nothing. We're going to do this. Hello, Milwaukee. I'm Pastor Walter Owens with my co-host, Pastor Charles Emery. Ooh. Oh, my God. Bless the Lord Almighty. <laughs> man, man, man. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. What a day. What a day. Starting out well. It is. Hallelujah. Well, oh boy. <laughs> How you doing today, man? I'm doing fabulous. Yeah, it's fabulous. Okay. Hey, before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to your senior pastor, Pastor Cornell Anderson. Spoke with him earlier. Uh, he said he wasn't feeling good. He had some tests done yesterday and... Uh, by the praise of God, he's doing good. So That's I just want to let him know to hear that. that we're sending prayers out to him. And uh, uh, I want to give a quick shout out to my sister in law, Jackie Dotson, which is the author of More of You God. Yesterday was her birthday. Oh, wow. Praise so we God. had a wonderful time uh, celebrating her. Um, she called in uh, from uh, the Georgia area. And last night on our prayer line, we had a wonderful time with her. and. We had a lot of prayers out for those who are sick and shut in. And my prayer goes out to anyone that have lost a loved one in the last yeah. week. Amen. And our prayer goes out to them. And uh, just know that God is still with us. Yes, he is. Amen. 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 Also you know. to um, Denise Cole, who's um, uh, ill at this time as well. Okay. She probably okay. Up too. And a late belated birthday. We did say that to our uh a director manager here, Ryan Saucer. His wife, Deborah's birthday was last week. Oh, and right. Uh, yes, it was. Yep. So uh, we just want to let her know we still sending uh, birthday shout outs to her. And and she, man, she showed make Ryan look good, don't she? Hey, Amen. Man, you know, he coming here with a cheer and stuff. Then he said he didn't even want me on the camera because they want a joke picture show this <laughs> morning. But that's all right. <laughs> And that <laughs> takes me to our subject that we was last week talking about your mindset. That's it. What is your mindset? What is your mindset? You know, so what are, what are your thoughts about that, Pastor? You know, when you think about the mindset, you think about the condition of the heart that goes together. Okay. Because without the mind and the heart, there would be no functioning in the body because Praise everything God. works Praise together. God. Yes, you yes, know, so. yes. And, you know, like last week we were talking about that. Uh, I just want to, uh, if you can, Pastor, and I want to go and just touch and bring our people uh, up to date uh, that was with us last week and those who are joining us today here at Joy 1340 AM and 97FM. Uh, go with me, Pastor, over to, you were breaking, breaking something down last week from the book of Proverbs, and I think we was in the fourth chapter, and then we could get in it, you know, well, we was talking about uh, the mindset. Uh, you was talking about something. Well, let's start at Proverbs uh, uh, 1 and go down to verse 5 because you were saying some very interesting things on with us with our mindset. It says, Hear, my children, the instructions of the Father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tending the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my word, keep my commandments, commands, and live. Give wisdom, give understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Amen. Come on now. You know, you 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 went went very deep with us on that when you said to give the understanding. And And the reason reason why is is so important, first of all, is the father giving instruction to his children that, mm -hmm. you know, you gotta um, maintain the laws and decrees of, of your instruction, which you're being taught in your life. Just like we're taught by God's word every day how to live and to balance our life out and conducive to his word. Yes, sir. And it's very important that, it, you know, we keep it, keep his commandments and live. And I, I find that very fascinating because a lot of times we don't keep God's commandments because we, we get sinful, you know, we get 
we get lured into the trapments by the enemy to follow our own desires of the flesh, which leads us away from God's truth. Okay. And so, okay. but the, the instruction here is to get wisdom and understanding and don't let it, you know, depart from you because if you let it go, then you never have that balance in your life to keep moving forward into the will and the plan that God has for you. You know, uh, so th that's why my question was to our listeners is what is your mindset? Are you staying focused on what God has for you? Or are you just getting caught up into the world? You know, that's very interesting. Like you said, now this is a father. Yes. So what happens then with the, uh, let me get this right. Thank you. How should we handle this or speak to the, the, the young people of today? Because they seem that they're very lost, Pastor. There's a few adults, quite a few adults lost too, but th this next generation after us, they seem so lost. They, it just seems like their mindset is not focused on who they truly are, which is children of God. And, you know, and that's the thing is because a lot of them are not being taught in their home. You know, the Word of God, they're not talking about taught the principles of God, so they're not being guided. As the Word says, train up a child in the way it should go, that when he's old, he will not depart from it. Mm -hmm. What way is he talking about? God's, God's way and okay. God's wisdom and God's truth. So if they're not being given the foundation in their life on how to build their life according to God's standards, then whatever desires of the flesh that the enemy pre presents in your mindset, that's why I always teach a lot on the mind because the mind is so powerful. The mind can either destroy you or it can, can build you up. You know, and a lot of times we allow our mindsets to wander in so much things that's not of God to where it caused the heart to be broken. That's what it says uh, in Proverbs 4.23, above all, guard your heart for, for its wellspring of life. Because whatever you deposit, I, I remember a message back when I was a teenager, um, this one pastor spoke, he said, no deposit, no return. So if you don't deposit anything into your spiritual bank account, how can you expect to get a return? So, and that's the same with God's word. If I don't deposit God's word in my life, how can, how can I expect the word of God to be beneficial in my life to give me the instruction, to give me the counsel, to give me the wisdom, to give me the leadership, give me the guidance that God wants me to go in if I don't have anything in there to, and the foundation to build me? Just like trying to build a house without a roof. You know, they ain't gonna, ain't gonna, not gonna stand because you gotta have that covering. That's the same way with God in our lives. We gotta have God as our covering through okay. the power of the okay. Holy Spirit. Yes. Did y'all catch that? Did y'all catch that, listeners? Because that's very important is allowing God to be our covering. Yes. And that's where we get our disconnect because we are so easily as a people to be misled. Yes. You know, we get our mind caught up on the things of the world. We get so confused about what is going on. And one thing, we think we done everything. Yes, you know, we do. Uh, I done this here. You ought to see what I have, what I got. You know, uh, I was looking at my notes here, Pastor. Yes. Uh, the first one, at, and uh, it says, be in God's word so that when a sinful thought enters our, our mind, such as temptation, we will be able to recognize them. Yes. For what is it to know and not understanding what God is saying to us? So my question is, is it's very important that we protect our mind and what we allow uh, yes. in our thoughts. Thoughts are very important. They are. Thoughts will cause us to live. Thoughts will cause you to die. Yes, it will. You know, and, and, <clears throat> and what our thoughts is very we should be very protective. And cautious. Come on now. Come on. Come and, on. And, come you on. know, because the thing, like, I remember I had wrote uh, last week a note, notation to myself. It says, the enemy plants seeds in our minds, which contradicts God's word, and, let, and we let our guards down and wander into a path that he sets before us to go. Come on. Because we, we're, we're not being protective nor are we cautious when the enemy presents these seeds in our mind. So it's just like, let's say you plant a garden, right? And I come into your, to your yard, and you don't even know I'm there. Just like Jesus used the parable of the man who, you know, had a vineyard, and he had some soul, his soul some wheat, and there's some tears. The enemy came at nighttime through some tears, mm -hmm. right, in mm -hmm. his garden. Mm -hmm. What happened? He said, if you go and start pulling up the tears, you're going to rip up the wheat, too. So let them both grow together. So it's like I'm coming to your garden, and I can put in some, some deadly fertilizer that I know is going to kill your garden. You know, and you don't know I've been there, but because I said it there, then you come out like, why my stuff is dying? It's not growing. The enemy does it with us every day in our mindsets because he knows 
If you're not prayed up, you're not consecrated, you're not seeking the face of God, he can come along and put some fertilizer of the of his sinful desires in your life that he knows is going to corrupt your data bank in your mind. Oh, I, I use a computer a lot. So, so the thing that God told me about computer is the hard drive, if your hard drive doesn't have the malware in it to present to, pre, to protect itself from the enemy when he plants things into your system to corrupt it, it's going to crash the whole system. So that's why we get the terminology of a, of a virus. Right. You know, I want to bring a confirmation to what you just shared with us, but I want to do it with Scripture. Mm -hmm. Go with me right quick, uh, uh, passed over to the book of Matthew chapter 4. Yes. Matthew 4 and 1. And what you was talking about, how we are easily tempted, we got to be careful of what uh, uh, we allow in our mindset. And it's very important because over here in Matthew uh, chapter 4, are you there? Uh, look what it says. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to the temp. I'm sorry, let me start over. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. Now, that first uh, a sentence over in this paragraph, it says, then Jesus was led up right. by the Spirit into the wilderness. And I was talking to you earlier about that. Break that down for our listeners. And you know, and the thing is, it says Jesus was led, led and the Amplified says he was led, guided by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness, desert, to be tempted, tested, and tried by the devil. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit, because you got to understand when it says spirit in the King James Version, is referring to the Holy Spirit, not just any type of spirit. Come on, come on. Because come on. he was God in the flesh, he still was being governed and led by the Holy Spirit into the place to be tested, to be tried, to approve who he is, you know, for his ministry. And that's one thing God revealed to me about this passage of Scripture Jesus was being defined in his ministry in the human standpoint. Even though he was God in the flesh, yet he still had to have the, the affirmation from the Holy Spirit to go do what God has sent him to do in the earth. Stay up under that covering you Stay under that about. covering. Hey, Pastor, let's take a quick break. Hey, I'm Pastor Walter Owens, along with my co-host, Pastor Charles Emery. You know, Pastor, I want to welcome all our listeners to join us for our weekly broadcast which is Focus 2020, and they can find us where? At Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM every Thursday at 2.30 PM. And what will they receive once they get here? They receive a word from the Lord, and I guarantee you will be blessed. Amen. Amen. You said something, Pastor, that, that is so powerful how we are easily tempted about what it's been said to us. We notice in the book of Genesis how the devil used God's word and, and, yes, and changed him around. Because mm -hmm. in, in verse 3 it says, Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. See, here it is, we find that Satan do this to us every day. He'll use the word of God to us. Mm -hmm. But if we don't know the word, we'll fall in that trap. We will. And, and you got to know the word for yourself because it's very vital to your spiritual growth to have the word in your heart. I was, I was reading in one of the notations. It says, quoting scripture the time of temptation is not a talisman, but rather serve uh, the purpose of getting into our, our, our minds on the bi biblical track. But we need to know God's word and stay ahead of you know stay ahead uh, of and t of time in order to accomplish the, the will of God. Because if you stay in the word, the word is going to always come back to you in the time of need. That's one thing about God when He says He He, he will never put anything more on you than, than you can bear. Right? Uh -huh. The reason why because He already has the remedy. You know, the enemy just like in Genesis when he came and tempted. Adam and Eve in the garden, what did he do? He told them the scripture, what God had just said to them about the tree of good and evil. They already were like God, but he told them, if you eat of this tree, you'll be like God. They forgot who they were at that instant because he blinded them from the truth of God's word. When they knew the truth, and that's how the enemy does, like it says here, you know, in the scripture, uh, I think it's 2 Corinthians 4, 4 and 10, somewhere around there, it talks about if the gospel be hid, it's hid to them who are lost from the God of the world, blind the minds of them. Why? Because he blinds your mind from the truth by deception. 
So he come in in a, in a subtle way. he would tell you the truth with twisted message. Come on, in now, there you go. There and you give go. you a twisted you message go. with the truth, even though it is the truth. And he would tell you that if you do this, uh, you're going you're gonna to be more like God. If you if you do this, your eyes going to come open and everything about you is going to be just like God. But the problem is we were created in his image and likeness already by faith. So if we don't know who we are by faith in Christ, then when the enemy comes along with his temptation to tell you, oh, if you turn these stones to bread, you, you know, he says, then you, you can worship me. You know, so so the enemy like has a trap to get us in a place where we turn our focus from God, turn it to him. You know, and that's why I always share with people all the time. Satan knows who you are, but do you know who you are? But you notice, Pastor, when it, when he said that, when he said that, when he was trying to tip, uh, tempt Christ, mm -hmm. he always come back with the scripture. Yes, he you does. said this, but this is what it is. Mm -hmm. Because in verse five, it says, then the devil took up took him up into mm -hmm. the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, you are the son of God. If throw you yourself are. down to mm -hmm. me. Yeah. If you are, yeah. you throw yourself down to me. So make him question yourself. Right. See if you really know who you really are. <laughs> That's why I always say, what is your mindset? Mm -hmm. You know, so we have to really protect our mind because as, as, as you were saying uh, quoting the scriptures as time of a temptation is not a telequote. Explain that. That's that's a very important it, it piece is. there. First of all, you know, to understand what a talisman is, it's, um, it's, it's a stone, a ring, or any other object engraved with figures or characters supposed to possess occult powers or worn as an amulet or a charm. So whatever artifact that you use and you use it as 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 your covering or your protection, like the rabbit foot or the good luck charms and all these different things. These are talismans that we use, some people believe, to war off evil spirits. But that's witchcraft. And that's why you have to really be careful. Even your cross could be a witchcraft, you know, a witchcraft because it can become a talisman if you put too much faith in the cross of an artifact that you carry instead of the cross in your heart. It's a difference. I can wear an external cross, but if my faith is in God, the cross is in my heart. It's not the artifact that I'm carrying. And a lot of people don't get their, mis get their twisted because they think I can get all these different artifacts, the, the good luck charms, I can put some, some things on my door and all this stuff, you know, and I can cover myself with this. But the Bible tells us, anoint your house. We can anoint our house with the covering of the Holy Spirit. Come on, come you on. You know, because yes. it's a difference yes, than taking stuff that man produced like a lot of people believe in African artifacts and all those different things. You don't realize witch doctors prayed over those things. So you bring them into your house, you're introducing spirits into your house. You know, and I can say that literally because I have witnesses in my, my parents' house. My father had this one artifact that's from Africa. And to make a quick story, you know, um, I saw spirits in the house when I was over there. I seen people walking across the floor when I was over there. And then it's literally with my eyes see things happening. And, and the Lord said, just start rebuking that unclean spirit from that artifact because that's exactly where it's originated from. And you got to be careful when God begins to show you things, open up your eyes, guard your mind, guard your heart, because the enemy comes with deceptive ways in many different forms to lure you from the truth. That's good, Pastor, because live, we should live in dependence upon the Holy Spirit. We should seek our strength from God. Seek our strength from God, yes. and because as we, I, I'm loving this here over in Matthew's passage because we can see how the devil is trying to attempt yes. the Creator, the one mm -hmm. that created him. Yes, and, and and I love this. Anytime we run, out, get ourselves caught up. That's yes. what I want to say. Anytime we get ourselves caught up, where we know the enemy is attacking us, yes. and the only way you're going to know the enemy. Is going to attack you. You have to have what is called a discerning spirit. You do. Discernment. Which comes from God. Yes. And it's easy because what did God say? When he was attacking him, he used his scriptures he used back it. Yes, on he did. Yes, he did. You know, flee from me. Yes. You know, who, who do you, if I kneel down to you, you're going to give me all this. How are you going to give me something that's already, already mine? mine? That's right. You know, I love when you was talking about these artifacts. People... Uh, where they, they have these, I remember growing up a kid, like you said, the rabbit foot. Mm -hmm. I remember the old folks used to say back in the day, 
<laughs> you got a rabbit foot. It didn't work good for the rabbit if you wearing it. You know, we're saying it as a joke, but we have to be very careful we do. what we make out of an idol that we try to use to the, that's going to protect yeah. us. I remember that, that with the rabbit foot. You said, okay, give me good luck, give me good luck, give me good luck. He ain't giving no good luck. For no rabbit foot. <laughs> but a lot of people. Yeah. And a lot of people believe change. it, though. Yeah, they believe yeah. that. They believe that. But if you want to believe anything, believe in Jesus That's Christ. That's Believe in this you word. Because I'm looking over here in Matthew 5, uh, 5 and 5. It says, in verse 3, Blessed are the poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comfort. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit. The, the earth. earth. That's it. That's powerful there, Pastor. Yes, it is. That's right there. So we should keep our mindset, change your thought pattern. Absolutely. You know, and, 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 you know, last week we was talking about uh, uh, you a man, you were upset. Remember mm -hmm. I said, at who? Right. You know, so right there, yo, you let the enemy infiltrate in your house, in your space, in your camp, and said the little the least little thing to you, and you got upset. Agitated. Yes. Aggravated. Yes. Angry. Yes. Miserable. That's why Sean can put up with you when you come in here and never get things together. <laughs> I, I knew it was coming. I was waiting on that moment. Oh, yeah. I knew it. <laughs> but, 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 but me and Sean have the peace of Christ <laughs> is to know, because like I said, you're very consistent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. We back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. But but I'm saying that to say this, Pastor, is we have to stay humble. We do in Christ. You know, I like that when He said, "Bless are the meek, for they shall, for they shall inherit the earth." Bless are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall, shall be, be filled. filled. So. If if I change my mindset, my thoughts, yes, and it. because you know you find a lot of people and and daily they you know I love Lord, you know God help me. I want you to do this for me. I'm 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 tired of going through these things. I'm losing my mind. God didn't say that. You said that. Because <laughs> our confession. Come on now. Our confession, on, you know, on, and that's why on. it's so important to guard your heart because whatever goes into your mind through the ear gates, goes back to the ear gates, whatever I listen to, it feeds into my mind, goes into my heart, then it comes out of me. That's mm -hmm. why I love when Jesus says, not what goes into a man that corrupts him, but what comes out of him that defiles him. You know, just like I was thinking of here when it says in verse 6 in Matthew uh, 4, and six, it said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it's written, he should give his angels charge over you. And in their hands, they should bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. The devil here is even quoting uh, Isaiah, uh, Psalms 91, 11, mm -hmm. about he shall give his angels charge over you. So the devil knows the word. And that's the thing. We can come to God big and plead, spit, cry, snot, all this stuff, oh, you man, know, trying to get look. God's attention, but yet you ain't living for God. Come on. Come How on. you going to get God's attention if your heart is not in tune with him for him to attend to you and answer your cry? It's so important to have that relationship with God and allow him to come into your heart and feed you with his Holy Spirit to change your mindset, change your attitude, change your character, change your entire lifestyle to become more conducive to his will. That's good, Pastor, you know, and, and, and that makes a whole lot of sense. What you just shared with us and our listeners is that the enemy will take the Scripture yes, he will. and throw it at you. That's why it's so easy for us to be uh, uh, confused. Oh, yeah. That's why it's so easy for us to be lost in the wilderness is because we claim we know the Word, but you don't. Yeah, You don't. Do. It's because... You know, like we always share it with our listeners is when we read the word of Christ, you got it's it's a hidden message and you gotta dig deep. You just can't you read what's up on the surface of what he's saying. You know, because in verse ten, then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord, your God. And him only. Come on now. He's telling see there, God is telling Satan, you should worship your God. Yes. Yes. He, Whatever you say about me, I still have power over you. <laughs> you belong to me. Yes, and that's what God is yes. telling us, that we have the power to tell Satan that. Yes. 
And the only way we can do that if we have the right mindset. This goes back to this point that we're not to feed our minds with that which promotes sinful thoughts. You know, and that's, that is so important because if we don't allow the word of God to be rooted and grounded in us, we will feed on the things of the flesh that will cause us to be in a pathway of a rebellion, stubbornness, resisting God, and call ourselves to fall short of God's glory. Amen, amen. You know, Pastor, what i like you to do, and I just want to thank all our listeners for being with us today, joining with us. I hope you all receive something. We want you all to keep your mindset free in Christ, but close it to the enemy because it's very important. Satan will attack your mind, yes, and he will. will bring destruction. Pastor, give us a quick word, a uh, uh, encouraging word before we get out of here. I just want everyone to stay encouraged and get into the Word of God and allow the Word of God to get inside of you and bring a change in your mindset, your attitude, your character that is lining with God's Word, that you will live a fruitful and a free life in Christ. So, Lord, we thank you for this message. Pray that the Father bring a change in all of our lives. We've heard this word that will be fruitful to the growth of our relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, I'm Pastor Walter Owens, along with my co-host, Pastor Charles Emery. You know, Pastor, I want to welcome all our listeners to join us for our weekly broadcast, which is Focus 2020. And they can find us where? At Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM every Thursday at 2.30 PM. And what will they receive once they get here? They receive a word from the Lord, and I guarantee you will be blessed. Amen.